Are we ready, David? Okay, folks, we're, we're ready to go. I think we have Mark online. I see I forgot to say Grace. I was, uh, I was watching a Three Musketeers movie with the uh, grandkids, and when it came time for lunch, the uh, head musketeer, he bowed his head and he said, Lord, some people have food but no appetite. Others have appetite but no food. I have both. Thank you very much. Let's, uh, let's give the caterers a round of applause for a nice lunch. We're, I think we, I think we have Mark online, don't we? Have we yes, have we I'm got here. This? Mark, are you there, Mark? I'm unvaccinated okay. and I'm here. Can we hear you, Mark? Can you hear me? Testing one, two, three. There we are. I can. Uh... I'm unvaccinated, so I hope I don't contaminate uh, with my unwashed masses. Hey, I hope I don't. I hope I don't can contaminate you. you How are you internet. making out, David? Mark, just keep talking. If you can hear us, just keep talking. Some way, so, so far, we're not hearing you. All right. But, testing uh, one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Let me you see. You got any can... Donald Trump jokes or anything you could tell us? Can you hear me? Testing oh, one, two, three. Let's uh, see what we got here. Hold on. We I actually I had, a, uh, testing we had a trial run of this on what was it? Uh, Am I here now? There we are. Hi, Mark. Hi. How's it going? I'm, I'm, it's going just, I'm one it's of the going unwashed just masses. Great. I'm one of Pardon the unwashed me? masses. Sorry, I can't. Yeah, hear you. yeah, we're definitely the unwashed, ma the unvaxxed mass masses. Anyway, at least some some of us are. We've had uh, some of our best friends are still in Ontario because they couldn't fly out here. Just like uh, I was telling the Mark that you said you wouldn't mind. You, Mark isn't vaccinated. I guess it's no secret. That's why he couldn't get across the border. And he said, "Well, I wouldn't mind a little stunt. Like if I ended up in jail for a couple of days, it'd be a good publicity yeah. for my new book, The Great Reset." But when we saw what they're doing to some of the people from the truckers convoy, he said, well, I don't want to be in jail for six months just so I can talk to you folks. So he said, how about if I do it by Zoom? So uh, we're, uh, we, uh, we're, Mark, you've got, you've got a new book coming out, don't you, Mark? A Great Reset? Yes, a Great Reset yeah. coming out. And I also have the Green Fraud book, The Green New Deal, which is out since the last time we spoke. The last time I was there was 2019. So that book. Yes, exactly. Out. Yeah, that was, uh, we were still free up here then. Yes. And we yes. were allowed to visit our friends from America. Exactly. Well, are we all set to go, David? Don't Mark, uh, Mark, uh, welcome to Alberta, albeit by Zoom. Uh, we're just yes. thrilled to have you. Uh, your friend from uh, CFAC Canada, uh, Kim Purdy, was supposed to be here to introduce you, but she fell and broke her wrist this morning. At least oh, she thinks she broke it. We're, we're getting, uh, you know, like climate change induced snow up here this morning, and so we're struggling with that, and so is she. But uh, anyway, well, thanks for taking time to present to us. Uh, we'll turn it over to you, and then we'll have a question and answer after you've made your presentation, okay? All right. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank, thank you. Go ahead. Well, I'm happy to speak to Freedom Talk again. I wish it could have been in person. Uh, uh, I was all gung ho to go, but it just looked, logistically it became uh, increasingly difficult uh, given all the uh, amount, amount of time it would have taken for me to do an illegal border crossing. But of course, that I didn't actually say that. I don't want to get banned on social media. So I don't know what I just said. Anyway. Thank you for having me here. I have a big up. The last time I spoke to you, as I mentioned, was 2019. So I have a huge updates today. We're talking about COVID, climate, great reset. We're talking about the morphing of COVID and climate. So why don't we just dig in? I got a great PowerPoint all set up. Let me set up my screen to share it here. Uh, in the United States here, we have been obviously probably not as bad as you. And I live in the state of Virginia. 
uh, during the COVID lockdowns. And that wasn't as bad as a lot of the other northeastern states. So it was a uh, we had a wild ride of two years here. But in my state of Virginia, we led we led the fight back against dropping the vax mandates and masks and all the masking of kids. And that's what happened uh, with uh, the governor we elected. That sent a rocket ship throughout the country. In New Jersey, the Democrat almost lost. And then they did focus groups. And it turned out even the Democratic base didn't want it. So immediately, the Democrat focus groups in polling, they dropped all the restrictions almost immediately after the Virginia election. So it just goes to show you that it, it all began at local school board meetings. So, all right, hold on one second. Do you guys see my screen? Can anyone hear me? Is my screen on? Is the video on? Screen on. Do you see the screen? Hello. Uh, just need confirmation that I'm not talking to myself. So testing one, two, three. Let me. One second, please. Hi, Mark. Hi. Do you hear audio? We can hear you. All right. I'm going. I'm onward. Thank you very much, Danny. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. The title of my talk is the COVID Climate Connection, Climate Lockdowns, and as I mentioned, the morphing of COVID and climate. But I thought I'd just do start out with a little refresher. First of all, since 2019, when I was there in November 2019, uh, my book came out, Green Fraud, in March of 2021, so a, a little over a year ago. Why the Green New Deal is even worse than you think. And there's a great forward by Mark Stein. The book is worth reading just to read Mark Stein's forward. And by the way, Mark Stein has now, I guess, moved to the UK and is doing UK TV there uh, and is no longer on Fox News or American Radio with the passing of Rush Limbaugh. So we miss Mark Stein here in America. My book coming out is the next one. It's a great reset. And this deals with the COVID climate connection, but also the World Economic Forum, Davos, how they want to exploit every crisis. So let's just do a quick read through, a very brief on the her, uh, history of the Earth and climate, CO2. Scientists, geologically speaking, the Earth is in a CO2 famine. Will Happer, uh, 200 peer reviewed studies, considered the foremost expert on the greenhouse gas, testified to the US Senate to that exact effect and said that the Earth was in a CO2 famine We've had ice ages with CO2 as high as 8,000. We're only at 400 ppm now. Temperatures have been similar when carbon dioxide was 20 times higher than current levels. Gore only told part of the story. That's the chart that scared everyone in Gore's original 2006 film. And of course, if you go back and look at the geologic history, go back millions of years, that's Gore's high point. In a, and, just, and even this is a small blip in the Earth's geologic history. But you can see where Gore's scaremongering fails to scare when you look at the bigger picture. This is a current chart from the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. Past temperatures on Earth were too warm for ice sheets, perennial ice sheets. And if you look at it, we're down there on the right where it says today, well below where we've been. In fact, we are in the 10% coldest era, geologically speaking, of Earth's history. 90% of the Earth was too warm to have ice at either pole. So next time someone tells you the Earth has a fever, ask them in what context. Even the United Nations has admitted in the 1990 report, the medieval warm period, warmer than current temperatures. And that was, of course, changed. We had, when I worked in the U.S. Senate, we had a scientist come testify that he got emails from top U.N. scientists saying we have to get rid of the medieval warm period after this U.N. report came out. Lo and behold, the, the 2001 report erased the medieval warm period and then came up with Michael Mann's hockey stick, which was called statistical, statistic, statistical fraud. So we know that was nonsense. This was a chart Patrick Moore promotes, and it shows you that the Earth, you know, in the words of uh, the Nobel Prize winning scientist Ivar Giever, you wouldn't even notice the global warming we've had over the last 120 years without modern instrumentation. And by the way, if you go back, we probably cooled or have been about the same temperatures of Roman warming period, cooled or, or uh, same temperatures in medieval. But we've definitely warmed since the end of the little ice age. And that's why and that's also when modern temperatures came on. But that's essentially the temperature chart that you see there. For the lay person, I like to say climate is governed by hundreds of factors. The idea we can manage it, understanding, manipulating at the margins, one politically se selected factors as misguided as it gets. It's scientific nonsense. That's. UK scientist Philip Stott, who's featured in the original Climate Hustle and in my book, 
green fraud and politically incorrect. The 97% consensus, this is sort of just a review. 77 anonymous scientists whittled down from a survey of over 10,000. We don't know their names, their affiliations, their exact view. All we know is that they said CO2 can warm the atmosphere and you know, the earth is warming. Uh, does CO2 have an impact on that? And this is how they get it. Another study by John Cook, UN lead author Richard Tulse took a look at that and said it was essentially pulled from thin air, not based on any credible research. The 97% consensus claim is a talking point. And most of these are governing boards of uh, science groups that vote sometimes in the case of the Canadian Royal Society, they didn't even uh, have a governing board. Just the head of it declared that there was a 97, that they all agreed with the consensus of the UN. The UN is fast approaching a key tipping point. This is just April of this year. The UN has now had a three-part report coming out on the science, the models, the uh, solutions. They're doing the same old nonsense. 50 years of eco-doom warnings going back at least to 1972 for the United Nations. And happy Earth Day, by the way. It's also Vladimir Lenin's uh, birthday today, which is appropriate. Not John Lenin, but Vladimir Lenin of uh, Soviet Union fame and Marxist fame. This is um, some of the just failed predictions going back uh, to the first Earth Day and before the first Earth Day. A lot of them just dealing with energy shortages and overpopulation and we're all going to die. Man-made global cooling. The same solutions proposed for man-made global cooling were the same solutions proposed for global warming. S wealth redistribution, sovereignty limiting treaties. Uh, they blame man-made global cooling in the 70s for uh, uh national security threat for bad weather, and then they flipped on a dime. The world is going to end in 12 years, said AOC. But in my book, I found the earliest known climate tipping point, 1864. George Perkins Marsh warned an academic of climatic excess unless men changed their ways. Abraham Lincoln was president when we know of the first documented climate tipping point. And we're still here. Lord Christopher Monckton from uh, UK IPCC expert reviewer, former advisor to Margaret Thatcher. He's been on top of this. We had a longer pause that ended with an El Nino spike. But now since 2014, we have a seven year, six month global warming pause, which is driving them crazy. The old climate pause we had, by the way, the temperature has, has increased since the, late, since the 1970s global cooling scare. Uh, but Essentially, it hasn't increased that much, and it has been kind of flat since the 90s. And so they play all kinds of games, hottest year, hottest decade, tenths of a degree, hundreds of a degree, within the margin of error, within the margin of adjustment. It's a big uh, game they play. Now, the EPA, 2022, this is the, one of their uh, big charts trying to scare people. Those charts start in 1960, and see how they show heat waves increasing, climate change indicators. But there's one problem. The start point was 1960. This is the U.S. heat wave index by the, United, by the EPA, still on their website today. They hid the 1930s. Now, look at that chart. The coldest period of the entire 100-year period there is 1960. That's where the EPA started their analysis to show heat waves increasing. What if they had gone back another 30 years? They would have shown a radical cooling of heat waves in the United States. This is some of the statistical nonsense that government agencies do literally without even a second thought. This is a kind of analysis. Just look at the first. They show a steady increase designed to scare you, designed to get UN treaties, designed to get carbon taxes, designed to get Green New Deals. But the reality is that's the same EPA chart. And it's actually footnoted in the report they did. And you click on it and you see the 1930s much, much hotter than today. The droughts. This is our current drought here in the West in the United States. Uh, and you see where it is, look at that, it has gone up a lot in the last few hundred years, but look at the history of droughts. Uh, and this was actually covered in some mainstream media publications in California. The idea that today's weather is unprecedented does not hold, and whether you're talking floods, hurricanes, droughts, tornadoes, either no trend or declining trends on climate timescales. We've heard it all before, Greenland, Greenland glaciers melting. It's without exaggeration that glaciers like those in Norway are a cat possibility of catastrophic collapse. 1939. So a wacky world of climate. So what happens when this when they when they when they just get tired of the same old recycling and climate tipping points? They come up with things like obesity causes climate change. Obesity epidemic may contribute to climate change. If you're eating too much, you are just like an SUV. You're a personal SUV. The problem is climate change also causes starvation. Millions face starvation as the world warms. So I would argue that you let 
obesity, create global warming, and then that global warming will create starvation, you'll come up with a good equilibrium. I think we can actually, it's a self-governing system. I don't think we have to panic. Armadillos, in the 19, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the 19, uh, current times, armadillos are said to be migrating north to escape global warming. It's so hot now, the earth has a fever that the lowly armadillo is migrating north to escape the heat. There's one problem. In the 1970s, the lowly armadillo was said to be migrating south to escape the man-made global cooling in the coming ice age. And armadillo, as far as I can determine, is the only animal that was both a mascot for man-made global cooling in the 70s and man-made global cooling in our current times. And this was widely covered in the 70s. ABC News did a whole thing talking about the lowly armadillo trying to avoid the, the, the cold by keeping migrating south. It just goes to show you climate is cyclical. When it comes to climate, beavers may be making the effects of climate change worse. That's point one. Or is it beavers, humanity's natural ally in, clim in combating climate change? Who knows? I mean, this is what they do. They go back and forth. You make two predictions, opposite predictions. You bet, if you bet on both teams to win the big sporting event, guess what? You're right. It doesn't really matter. Climate change will both increase and decrease fertility. This is the Philadelphia Inquirer. So they actually say a growing body suggests that impacts could both increase and decrease in increasing it. So guess what? Regardless of what happens with fertility, it's caused by climate change. So why not? Colder ch climate change, winters of the future will be colder and also warmer. So if we have more snow, less snow, colder winters, warmer snow, guess what? They predicted it. The climate models were accurate. You can take it to the bank. Just not one of Justin Trudeau's regulated banks because you'll uh, end up uh, having no money. Climate change will give more people diarrhea. Why not? Reading all this crap, a lot of people are going to get indigestion, diarrhea. And if you are at a loss for words after you hear all this nonsense, there's a reason for that too. Climate change is the cause. And this is actually, the, the World Economic Forum is promoting this. The, Im the impact of climate change on language loss. This is an article from Babbel magazine. Babbel, of course, is the app where we all can learn French or Spanish or whatever language you want. They're now gone climate woke. They've gone climate woke. They're now, this is from last week, is climate change accelerating language loss. Uh, so you may not know it, but you might be losing words in your vocabulary. Whole languages are disappearing due to you driving a pickup truck. Global warming was causing more crime. Global warming brings more crime. And this is according to UN IPCC scientists. And climate change will become one of the major forces driving crime as the century progresses. This is the Washington Post. But wait, this is important. The New York Times is saying lowering crime causes global warming. And that's an actual headline, New York Times, how lowering crime contributes to global warming. So what does it mean? How can the New York Times claim this? Prison inmates consume less than the average citizen. So fewer prisoners mean higher overall energy consumption. Now, we're working our way up to COVID lockdowns and the morphing. Now, just think of this. Think of a lockdown and think of what the New York Times was proposing six years ago. Fewer prisoners mean higher overall energy consumption. The more people we lock up, the lower the carbon footprint of the average person. That's pretty scary. So global warming causes more crime. Reducing crime causes more global warming. Defunding the police is the new climate solution. This is actually a good climate policy. Somehow they come up with that. There's also even more radical people who believe there's no Green New Deal without abolishing the police. If you disagree with any of this, you're a climate denier. You belong in jail. Bill Nye the Skeptics Guy has entertained the idea of jailing climate skeptics for affecting his quality of life. So this is where they are with the climate. Now, this is a great chart because it shows you We've been fighting United Nations for the climate safety and for a, a safe, livable climate. The first Earth Summit in Rio, 1992, this is a chart of carbon dioxide emissions, and it has every major UN meeting since. Buenos Aires, the Kyoto Protocol, Copenhagen meeting, the Paris Agreement, even the lockdowns. CO2 continues to rise regardless of what the UN does, regardless of how many treaties we sign, regardless of how many carbon taxes we employ. And why would that be? You can see right here on this chart, USA uh, is leading the way under Donald Trump. We had the energy dominance the first time since Harry Truman was president. We, we basically replaced fracking with coal. 
coal with fracking, um, fracking with coal, and that led to we, us leading the world in reducing emissions. Well, we weren't even part of the UN Paris Agreement. And you can see what China and India is doing, China building one coal plant a week. John Kerry has admitted this climate futility. Even if every American biked to work, carpooled, it wouldn't make a difference. All in, if, if all industrial nations, this is Western Europe, Canada, US, went to zero emissions, all of them, it wouldn't be enough. 65% of the world's pollution comes from the developing world, from CO2 comes from that. You can just see China, India, Indonesia. And this is the futility of it. This whole idea of the West shutting itself down as some kind of climate virtue signal to reduce emissions. First of all, we haven't been able to reduce emissions. And second of all, even their activists admit it's nonsense and won't have an impact. So could a small nuclear war reverse global warming? There's a lot of excitement now because of the Russian invasion of Ukraine and people talking about nuclear war potential. Some people are actually excited. Huffington Post could, could reverse global warming. The Atlantic, just a few weeks ago, on top of everything else, nuclear war would be a climate problem. How many of you think about that? When you think of, say, uh, you know, Iran getting nuclear weapons or, say, uh, a mad uh, Putin firing nuclear missiles and you, know, you get in a giant war of nuclear war. What's the first thing you think of? I wonder what Greta Thunberg would think. Do you think of a climate issue? This is what the mainstream media thinks about. Nuclear war is now a climate problem. So what is the goal of all this? To take away your power. A Rutgers University professor a few years ago said, to save the climate, we have to give up demand for constant electricity. Important word, constant electricity because the UK power chief has now said the era of constant electricity is ending. Families would have to get used to power only when it's available. Keep in mind, Boris Johnson, I'm not gonna get into the Russian, the whole national security issue of energy, domestic energy, but Boris Johnson actually closed fracking wells in the UK in 2019, poured concrete into the wells as a virtue signal for how committed he was to net zero as they became more and more dependent on Russian oil and Russian gas, the same with Germany and uh, all of the, all throughout the West of Western Europe. Britain, as a result, this is 2022, facing the biggest drop in living standards as energy prices are skyrocketing. This is in the United States. They're calling it the Putin price hike. Our gas is now over four US dollars per gallon and a cheap end. If you go to states like California, New York, you're getting upwards of six, seven dollars a gallon. But look at that. Biden was sworn in. Gas prices took off. This is one of the issues that has nothing to do with Putin, has to do with the fact that Biden is promoting environment, social governance. He's shutting down bank financing for fossil fuels. He shut down all exploration on, on lands. He shut down pipelines, Canadian XL, et cetera. He sent a signal to the marketplace that it was not profitable. And then any investor who starts putting money in fossil fuel projects is going to lose their money because the government is not going to support it. So the climate lockdowns. Now, since I last, been, I last spoke to you in 2019, we had coronavirus um, and the climate lockdowns. I'm sorry, the COVID lockdowns, but we're going to talk about how they're morphing into climate lockdowns. This was the future environmentalists want. We've heard of uh, the Delta variant, the Omicron variant, the, all the various Omicron. But this is the most deadly and frightening variant that's come out of coronavirus. And this is where we are now. The pivot from covid to climate, or I would call it the morphing of COVID to climate, is about to go back now to climate as COVID sort of wanes a little bit. Climate Envoy John Kerry in 2019, the parallels between COVID and climate are screaming at us, both positive and negative. You could just as easily replace the words climate change with COVID-19. It is truly the tale of two pandemics, deferred, denied, and destroyed. Now notice he called climate change a pandemic. The other with even greater risk if we don't reverse course. The, this is actually a 2013 comment from Ivo de Boer, the former head of the UN climate thing. The only way a 2015 Paris Agreement he's referring to can achieve a two degree goal is to shut down the whole global economy. Presto, they got their wish a few years later, almost like they thought it through. This is 2021 UK Guardian actual headline. Global lockdown every two years needed to meet the Paris goals. Study says, think about that. In 2013, they're telling us we had to shut down the world to meet our Paris goals. In 2021, they're actually saying, wait, we found the best mechanisms, lockdowns. This is the greatest thing since sliced bread. So the phrase climate lockdowns, am I just banting about some phrase come up with the, you know, and some Exxon funded denier? No. 
This is actually a Gates Soros funded progressive professor in Europe uh, named Mariana Mazzucato at the University College of London came up with the phrase. They're using the phrase. Gates Soros funded professors are using it. The world may need to resort to lockdowns again. This is in uh, 2020 in September. This time to tackle a climate emergency. Well, what, what would a climate lockdown look like? Governments would limit private vehicle use, ban consumption of red meat, impose extreme energy saving measures, while fossil fuel companies would have to stop drilling. To avoid such a scenario, we must overhaul our economic structures and do capitalism differently. Now, COVID lockdowns limited our mobility. We couldn't fly. We had curfews in our home. You had stay at home orders. You had vax mandates keeping you from going places if you didn't get the vax. You had mask mandates. You had to comply to go anywhere. Banned consumption of red meat. Hey, the lockdowns and the supply chain issues making red meat very hard to get. Uh, they're causing catastrophic price increases. And then also fossil fuel companies stopped drilling. They've been doing that regardless. They're using crisis to exploit and get the policies they would ne otherwise never get. This is the Washington Post. We're flattening the coronavirus curve. We can flatten the climate curve too. Same language now. Who is up for two weeks to flatten the climate curve? Let's say a show of hands. Just two weeks, that's it. Two weeks to flatten the climate curve and then we'll, you can have your old lives back, right? They are not stupid. They know a good thing that happened. What basically happened was COVID came along, Greta Thunberg, all the climate activists, you and they were jealous at first. Within a few weeks, they recovered and realized if we can do this for a virus, shut down the whole world, impose all these policies, we can do the same thing for climate. And that's what they're lusting after now. Greta Thunberg's famous line, I want you to be, I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. Now, think of this in the context of COVID. 50 plus years of epidemiology, public health, one of the most basic rules was don't create public panic. Keep everyone calm. Keep everyone uh, you know, in a rational manner. You don't want hysteria. The first thing they did when COVID hit was max out the hysteria. Fauci, UK, Neil Ferguson, the climate models, the scare scenarios. They wanted people to panic. The same thing Greta Thunberg always wanted in, in climate change. She never got it among adults. All the polling showed adults never really cared that much, but they started getting traction among kids who were indoctrinated. So if you fail to scare adults on climate, indoctrinate the kids. They're easier to scare. And that's what she learned. But when they have you panic, you essentially can't, you don't have a, a rational and calm reasoned approach to how to solve any kind of problem. If you're panicking, you're listening to people like Neil Ferguson and Anthony Fauci and the World Health Organization, Tedros, and Bill Gates funded and all, you're listening to all that nonsense instead of actually thinking rationally. Chuck Schumer in the United States, urging Biden to declare a national climate emergency. Does that sound familiar? I have it in my book coming out, The Great Reset, a history of climate I'm sorry, of, of emergency declarations by government. Going back to the Roman Republic, the descent of the Roman Republic into an empire occurred because of the abuse of emergency declarations. Centralization of power occurred in the Middle Ages due to abuse of emergency declarations. In 1933, a country that, is in, that was in Europe, well, I'll name the name Germany, but nothing else about it, had a 12-year uh, declaration, a state of emergency, which was abused by a certain leader. In uh, 2001, the United States, other countries declared a terrorism uh, declaration of emergency. We got things like the Patriot Act, which allowed government to start spying only on foreign nationals, not on our own citizens, quickly became on our own citizens. Under COVID, under a Republican president, Donald Trump, he signed a COVID uh, emergency, national public health emergency. This allowed every state governor, mayor, uh, yeah, uh, parliament leader to literally become dictators overnight. No more legislation, no more stinking democracy. They could just impose whatever mandate they wanted. Vaccines, masks, lockdowns, stay at home, uh, closing of churches. You couldn't go to church. You couldn't go to your local uh, mom and pop independent restaurant. But hey, you could go to corporate change. You could go to Walmart. You could go on Facebook and Amazon. The largest transfer of wealth from poor and middle class to the wealthy, according to CNBC and mainstream media. This isn't, again, libertarian economists claiming this or free market economists. This is the mainstream media admitting it, that this was the largest transfer of the lockdowns. So now they want to keep the good times going, declare a national climate emergency. The Great Reset. What happened in 2020 with the lockdowns 
Klaus Schwab was poised and ready, the head of the World Economic Forum in Davos for all the billionaires. In, uh, the, it's a basically a place where very wealthy people can meet with corporate leaders outside the purview of lobbying regulations uh, and any kind of oversight. It's very casual. It's all, you know, a meeting they have multiple times a year. He said the pandemic represents a rare but narrow window, window of opportunity to reflect, reimagine, and reset our world, the Great Reset. The world must act jointly and swiftly to reimagine all aspects of our society. In short, we need a Great Reset of capitalism. He did a whole book on this. He was poised and ready to go. Time Magazine jumped on this. The UN Secretary General jumped on it. The COVID pandemic could create an opportunity to rebuild a global economy along more sustainable lines. This is the part you need to get very afraid of. This is the Washington Post even calling this. Look, maul a radical pandemic treaty. Even the Washington Post is calling this. This is modeled after the UN IPCC. It's going to be a World Health Public Health International Organization literally designed uh, to, to uh, take away national sovereignty. So the next time there's a pandemic and Bill Gates is on this, Bill Gates is the largest funder of the World Health Organization. Pay attention to what I'm saying now. Put your forks down, drinks. This is probably the most important aspect of my talk right now. If they get an international treaty of the World Health Public Health led by the World Health Organization, that the next time they declare a pandemic, you're not going to have a country like Sweden able to do its own thing. You're not going to have countries that have some stronger lockdown, some weaker. You're not going to have a U.S., Australia comparison or Canada. You're going to have countries that sign on to this. And in the United States now, we have a precedent where we can join these kind of treaties without Senate approval against our Constitution. But we've done it with U.N. agreements and uh, uh, for years now. Once they allow this, it's your local elections, your primary, your president, your governor, your state house aren't even going to matter. You're not going to have you know, blue state, red state. It's going to be an international treaty. Their goal is to make it so you can't have a Ron DeSantis in Florida leading the beacon of freedom against COVID tyranny. They're going to make it so they can lock down immediately. If you don't go along, we've shown what happens when you don't go along. Justin Trudeau showed it with the truckers. Uh, and the world showed it against Vladimir Putin. I don't know if any of you were cheering when Apple and Netflix and banking institutions and all of corporate America immediately shut down and started harming the Russian citizens. But they have that ability. If you get crosshairs with what the establishment wants, this is what can happen overnight. This pandemic treaty, this is why the Washington Post is calling it a radical pandemic treaty. This is going forward. Bill Gates is all in. World Health Organization, I'm sure the Biden administration, I'm sure Justin Trudeau will get Canada involved in this. This is what needs to be on your radar. It's a frightening predicament. I don't want to spend too much time now, but I got to keep moving on that. But I could do a whole PowerPoint just on that. And if you go to Climate Depot and look it up, I have extensive reports on that. They're going to have the power under this to stop global Internet information, banking, your, your, again, Visa, MasterCard, whatever card you have could be shut off if your local leader doesn't, you know, tries to buck the system. It's a most frightening, tyrannical thing. It's basically making the world, a radical pandemic treaty would make the world into a one-party state of China almost overnight. And people are all going for it. In case there's any doubt, Bill Gates has said repeatedly that if you want to know how to handle the next COVID-like virus, look to Australia. Australia did it right. Australia was the beacon of the world. Australia was perhaps only second. Australia was second only to China, as you see what's going on in Shanghai. And then followed by Australia was probably Justin Trudeau in Canada, particularly when the trucker protest occurred, the Freedom Convoy. But this is what we're facing and Bill Gates will be part of this. So I'll move on from that now. I'll be happy to take questions on it. The pandemic, this is Time Magazine last year, Remade every corner of society. Now it's climate's turn. So remember, this whole idea of a pandemic treaty is based on the IPCC. But this will have teeth because people have shown that viruses scare the hell out of them. Climate, eh, not so much. Marxism's new face. This is now a whole series of academic reports and money going into these reports. Climate lockdowns. Americans need to cut energy use 90%, live in a 640, 640 square foot home, fly once every three years, limit new coding, get a plant-based diet, collective transport, notice no private car ownership, universal basic income, and economic degrowth, planned recessions. I've talked to Kevin Anderson at these UN reports. Their dreams came true. There's a reason why 
uh, activist, actress Jane Fonda actually said COVID was God's gift to the left. I would argue the gift didn't come from God. It may have come from a little bit further south, but they're openly saying the quiet part out loud. So what's also popping up in corporate world is these new cards that monitor your emissions. They keep a personal sustainability score. You plant a tree every time you make a purchase. It's so bad now that the MasterCard in the United Nations have officially joined forces in 2021. A new CO2 monitoring credit card will enable the tracking of your carbon footprint on every purpose. The World Economic Forum is so excited that they actually said it will monitor and cut off spending when you hit your carbon max. This is Davos approved. This is Klaus Schwab approved. This is Big Banker approved. And this is voluntary at the moment. But remember, we're very close to the day when you go to use your credit card at a grocery store and it says your credit card has been declined until you remove the hate speech or misinformation on your social media account. We're there. This is a now monitoring. If you buy too many, too many gallons of gas or you, you use your heating too high or your air conditioner too cold, you hit your max, they cut off your ability to spend. This is perhaps very shocking. The 2021 International Energy Agency issued a net zero report. International Energy Agency has traditionally been a fantastic organization of accounting nerds, keeping track of every country's energy mix, but somehow they've gone woke in recent years. This report, which came out last year, urges behavioral changes to fight climate change. This is the International Energy Agency, not Greenpeace, not the Sierra Club, not you know some radical uh, uh, environmental group run by David Suzuki or something. This is actually the International Energy Agency saying we need to shift away from private car use. Oh, there it is again, private car. You can't own a car. Upper speed limits, thermostat controls on your house, limits on your hot water, a life of deprived energy, no constant electricity. I'm trying to drill this in your head. They are no, when I spoke to you in 2019, this was the so-called hidden agenda. I was accused of being a conspiracy theorist. They can't accuse me. My new book in The Great Reset, I made it a point to cite NBC News, uh, uh, BBC, The Washington Post, USA Today, uh, the Canadian national papers. I mean, I did mainstream sources. I no longer am accused of being a conspiracy theorist because the progressive left uh, essentially forces the Davos. They're now so open about everything they want to do. All you got to do is quote them. That's it. There's no hidden agenda here. This is an open agenda. Continuing. UK got funded government report. And I write about all this in my book, Great Reset. I have two chapters coming on just the climate aspects of this, everything from ESG to the digital banking and all that. This is a UK funded report that was actually debated and very weakly by UK politicians. Very few stood up to it, urging a form of climate lockdowns. Quote, the report that was funded by the UK government, this is right before COVID break, I believe it was November, October, November, 2019. Stop flying, no new roads, airport closures, stop eating beef, Stop doing anything that causes emissions. And here's the kicker. Regulate carbon dioxide similar to the way we regulate asbestos. Now, humans inhale oxygen, we exhale CO2. They want to treat human breath as asbestos. This was actually debated the weak, you know, climate skeptics in the UK. And I went through all the transcripts. I think it was the House of Lords that debated this. Very few were willing to stand up to the premise. And they were all kind of like, oh, this report maybe goes a little too far. We need narrative change. We need to attack the premises. Journal Nature, the premier scientific journal. COVID lockdowns are the key to begin personal carbon allowances. Restrict this is 2021. Restrictions on individuals. This is important. Listen. Restrictions on individuals that were unthinkable only one year before have us, quote, more prepared to accept tracking and limitations to, quote, achieve a safer climate, unquote. They're openly saying that the COVID lockdowns essentially softened us up, conditioned us, part of a psychological op or psych op to get us to accept the climate and energy regulations they want to do next. This is in the journal Nature. Once again, not some obscure climate activist or Greenpeace blog. The British Medical Journal study called for meat and dairy price hikes. Meat consumption must be cut 80%, substantially fewer journeys by car. It gets worse. The 230 medical journals said that climate is the greatest public health threat. Did you just see that little switch there? COVID was considered the greatest public health threat. We had a, a viral emergency. Now, now that the, the, this is 2021, 
climate is now the greatest threat to public health. 230 medical journals signed on to it. Every mainstream journal you can imagine. They declared COVID-19, the, the response, i.e. lockdowns, to be, quote, the template for a climate response. Be afraid. Be very afraid. I'm going to continue. Climate lockdown. A paper published in a prestigious political journal lamented democracy. This was out last November 2021 calls for authoritarian environmentalism modeled after COVID lockdowns to fight the climate emergency. This is the foreign, uh, foreign policy magazine, mainstream organ of the establishment. What if democracy and climate mitigation are incompatible? Elected officials work through compromise, but a warming planet waits for no one. Okay, I'm just gonna say it one more time. This is no longer a hidden agenda. I'm sorry for screaming. I'm, yeah, I can't hear audience feedback, so I'm getting a little worked up here. But they're openly saying that they can't allow democracy anymore. Lund University, this is again, I think 2000, this is like 2019. To halt climate change, we need a biological Leninism. Not John Lennon of the Beatles, but Vladimir Lenin, who's by the way, happy birthday, Vladimir Lenin today. This is a very appropriate talk for that. His vision of the world is coming to fruition. State power should definitely be used to ban SUVs and private jets. So now they're going after a class of cars. This is just where we are. Anthony Fauci. Now, this was a little noticed. This came out in, I believe, August or September 2020. The date's probably, I can't see it from here. COVID-19 is due to extreme backlashes from nature. Forget the lab in China, the Wuhan lab leak. Forget that. It's due to extreme backlashes from nature. How do you solve COVID-19, according to Fauci, in this journal publication? It requires changes in human behavior and other radical changes. We need to rebuild the infrastructure of human existence. Anthony Fauci is blaming it on backlashes from nature, and we need to rebuild the infrastructure of human existence in radical changes. Again, Anthony Fauci's own quote, not some, you know, some college activist in a university making a protest or some high school kid with Greta Thunberg. Be afraid, be very afraid. This is the World Economic Forum openly saying their vision of 2030, you'll own nothing, you'll be happy. This is all, of course, time with the UN Agenda 2030. The World Economic Forum uh, is, you know, they say you'll, know, you'll have no privacy, you'll like it. You, the US won't be a superpower, you won't be eating meat, you'll have all your food delivered by drones. Bill Gates, NBC News has reported Bill Gates is now officially America's largest farmland owner. Let's give a, a round of applause to Bill Gates. Maybe it's just an investment. Maybe, you know, who knows? What, what's wrong with that? We can't, we're capitalists, right? We, the free market will decide. Bill Gates and his wife, in less than a decade, have accumulated more than 200, uh, 269,000 acres of farmland across 18 states, bigger than the entire size of New York City. Young farmers are now going up against billionaire investors who can compete with the likes of Bill Gates. More and more, we're seeing farmers turn into renters. More farmland could be gobbled up by the investor class. NBC News. Hold on. Bill Gates is not the one in overalls. He's not the one on the tractor. He's the landlord. Now, this is NBC News. What possible agenda? Am I just being paranoid? What possible agenda could Bill Gates have that he'd want to own farmland? Well, we'll get to that. China is also buying up American farms. The current trend is leading toward the creation of a Chinese-owned agricultural land monopoly in the United States. Now, hold on. I would argue it's not going to be a monopoly because Bill Gates is there. Bill Gates is the largest. So Bill Gates in China, at least we have some competition. We should all be, all be put at ease here. What is Bill Gates' agenda? Why would he want to buy up farmland? Well, rich nations should shift entirely to synthetic beef. Gee, do you think being the country's largest farm owner, he may have some sway in what we're eating and what farm crops are you being used for and what land is being used for and how much cattle? He also bragged that he drank water. This is an actual tweet from Bill Gates from 2015. He made, drank water made from human feces. And it's a machine that apparently chlor, uh, purifies it. But I just wanted you to know, this is the kind of stuff Bill Gates brags about. Actual quote, look it up, still up. The World Economic Forum, Davos, Klaus Schwab, why we might be eating insects soon. Hey, this is why they need the farmland. China, Bill Gates buying up farmland, pushing the fake meat, also pushing insect eating on us. Also, we need to start eating nurturing and eating weeds. They're starting to push weeds. This is the again, World Economic Forum, pushing weed eating, insects, and fake meat. They also have a whole thing. The World Economic Forum wants you to print 
fake meat. They talk about how many pounds of fake meat you can print a minute. It's, uh, you know, one of these 3D printers and you put in the 25 vegetable based oils and the goo together and it comes out apparently looking like meat with a texture and taste allegedly. Freedom of movement is being targeted. People under a COVID lockdown, people must make a declaration as where they need to travel. This is we had this for two years in many countries, including uh, the United States in certain parts. Proposed climate lockdown coming. If you fly, you can't fly commercial unless it is, quote, morally justifiable. This is what the activist base now is promoting. In other words, once every three year flying, that's in the major government and in the university reports. And now they're saying you can't fly unless it's morally justifiable. So in other words, you want to go on vacation? Eh, sorry about that. Nope. You can't fly commercial. But hey, if you're wealthy enough to have a private jet, go wherever you want. By the way, Bill Gates bid on the world's largest private jet transport company during the lockdowns. Literally the same week he was saying the lockdowns needed to continue. He was crushing poor middle class, keeping them from freedom of movement. Well, he himself was had a private jet, could go anywhere in the world and was buying more private jets in a whole transport company. Andrew Yang, who ran for the Democrat presidency uh, here in America, Current car ownership and model is inefficient and bad for the environment. He's proposing the elimination of private vehicle ownership and instead proposing a constant fleet of roving rental electric cars you just order up on an app. This is their vision for us. Mass transit, stuff yourself, wear a mask on a, on a bus, plane, uh, or a subway or whatever it is. And if you complain... You, don't, you, you, you can maybe go get an app and you rent a car for a few hours, but you're not going to be allowed to own it. This is a Canadian magazine passage. Shift away from relying on private vehicles. It's time to ban the sale of pickup trucks. This magazine has the same app. If you need a big pickup truck, you can go down to a hardware store, rent one for a few hours. You do not need to own it. The planet can't handle you owning that car. So the highest levels of government. Boris Johnson's UK transport minister, owning a car is outdated 20th century thinking. We must move to shared mobility to cut carbon emissions. See a show of hands. How many of you are still practicing outmoded, outdated 20th century thinking when it comes to car ownership? Okay, pretty good. Actually, I can't see. I'm just playing around here. Okay. Electric vehicles, this is business insider. Electric vehicles won't save us. We need to get rid of cars completely. You see where this is going. Again, I'm showing you mainstream establishment corporate publications. That's what's so shocking between when I last spoke to you in 2019, fast forward 2022, my mind is blown studying these issues since 19, basically 1992 is when I started this professionally as a journalist. Blow, mind blowing what's happened in the last two years. Ban gas cars. I had to do something. This is today's news. April 21st. Okay, yesterday's news. The world At the World Bank Climate Talk this week, speaker, not just any speaker, but Lord Nicholas Stern, the former chief economist of the World Bank, is floating the end of conventional vehicle sales. So what they're trying to do, the World Bank sending a signal to corporate America, to the automakers, to the banking industry, to financing, to not allow the sale of gas-fired cars. In other words, the ban the uh, gas-fired cars, mandate electric cars, which are 60,000 US dollars on average and have shorter range. And then you have to have you know, the infrastructure to support it. And also, of course, the whole issue of relying on Chinese rare earth mining and Congo and cobalt and under it. Forget all that for a second. They're sending a signal that your gas-powered cars are done. You don't have a say in it because it's being made at the highest levels of our planet at the World Bank. First, they came for your energy, then your car, and now houses pose more danger to the climate than vehicles. This is according to the UK Times. Another one of these ridiculous studies about how your house, and there's a whole movement afoot to, to increase the density and, and, and amount of housing in the suburbs, bring out public housing, high you know, tr public transit. They hate the suburbs of being decried as racist. What could be next? Your kids. Vogue magazine is having a baby in 2021. Pure environmental vandalism. All right. How many people in the audience have engaged in pure environmental vandalism? Okay. All right. This is what, again, Vogue magazine, not some obscure environmental extremist publication. BBC Science. How much does human breathing contribute to climate change? This is the kind of questions the BBC is asking. Now, just remember, the UK funded government report, or actually it was the international, the UK funded government report wants to regulate our breath 
as its best dose. They've already decided that. So even though this is a nice BBC headline in the form of a question, we know the answer. It's devastating. It's, we need to regulate it like, like asbestos. So where do we go from here? The climate community knows exactly. For the first time in 2021, again, I follow this for decades. This kind of stuff shocks me. A British Columbia doctor clinically diagnosed a patient, the first medically diagnosed patient in the world as suffering from climate change. She had heat stroke. This is the head of the emergency department at a British Columbia hospital. The patient, he picked up the patient's chart and penned in the words, climate change. What do you have? Is it your heart? Is it diabetes? No, I, I have a bad case of climate change. And there you go. Yeah, this, is, this is what we're going to be facing now. You know, I'm sure they're going to have mass testing sites and everything. And, and then, of course, if you have it, you'll have to quarantine and they'll have a vaccine for it. I don't know what the vaccine's going to be included of. That's not enough, though. So not only can you suffer medically and have your doctor diagnose you, but when you die, guess what your death certificate's now very likely to say? A group of academics in Australia are introducing climate death toll. They want to add climate change as a cause of death to death certificates. There's a component which allows for pre-existing conditions and other factors. This is from Australian National University. So now your certificate of death, cause of death, there it is right there, climate change. Why not? If you were diagnosed by the doctor with climate change, it seems plausible to say and reasonable that you would die of climate change. Why not? Unless they come up with that vaccine, then you're going to have a climate vaccine mandate. Bill Gates is all in on this. He warned in August of 2020, the actual death toll from climate change will be much, 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 three muches, greater than what we'd have to do with what we have with this pandemic. Harvard, this is important. Harvard School of Public Health, funded by China, as mainstream establishment corporate as you can get, has now officially linked COVID and climate. This is where I believe the new funding resources, the journals, the activists, the media, government officials are all going to start spouting this talking point. The root cause of climate change also increases the risks of pandemic. We need to take action on, take climate action to prevent the next pandemic. I'm gonna pause here a minute. This is another one of those bookmarked moments. This is how they're morphing COVID and climate. And I have numerous examples. In my book, I go into much greater detail on this exact point, but I just picked out Harvard. This is the Harvard School of Public Health, the most elite, one of the most elite public health schools in the world, saying the quiet part out loud. Unless we solve climate, more scary viruses, more lockdowns, more uh, mask mandates, more mask mandates, more stay-at-home orders, more debanking and defunding and deplatforming. This is it. We have, they're morphing. The official morphing of COVID and climate has begun. And this is where the future is. And I haven't studied it yet, but I'm sure the funding for uh, academic journals of, of, the, of the intersection between COVID and climate is through the roof right now. And this year will probably break all sorts of records. But this is the goal. You cannot talk about climate change without talking about health. You don't support Justin Trudeau's climate bills, the UN Paris Agreement, a Green New Deal, you are a grandma killer. You're a child killer. And look at this. Mainstream publications, climate change makes children more vulnerable to infectious diseases. Complete with the emotional picture of the girl sick in, in the, you know, with a temperature because you drove your SUV, because you insisted on having private car ownership, because you took that flight for a vacation and not a funeral. This is the world they want to create where every aspect of your life is micromanaged by a bureaucrat. It's the Sovietization of the once free West, the one party rule, the China, the, the Chinification. There's a reason Justin Trudeau praised China in the dictator and one party rule. There's a reason the New York Times, Tom Friedman, there's a reason the UN climate chief all have praised China's one party role, role, rule as being able to do what's right because they wanted their dictatorial powers COVID literally overnight made the once free West a one party state like China. And that's why Jane Fonda said this is a God's gift to the left. This is what we're dealing with. So it's not going to be long before you turn on your local cable news in Canada, too, where you're going to see climate change death tolls on the screen. In fact, the undercover camera by Project Veritas actually had CNN technical director saying climate. We're going back to climate full bore once the COVID fades. So expect again. COVID's not going away, viruses aren't. Expect the merging of COVID and climate. 
course, the reality of what Bill Gates claims and everything else is destroyed. If you go back, 99% a drop in climate change related deaths. They're actually approaching zero. And that's as Alex Epstein has said repeatedly, fossil fuels took an unsafe climate and made it safe. So if you're worried about sea level rise or storms or floods, none of which is actually on any alarming level and actually the extreme weather is actually declining on climate timescales. But if you're worried, fossil fuel wealth Prosperity, infrastructure, technology is the greatest way to defeat bad weather, not virtue signaling, giving up private car ownership, giving up your home, uh, locking yourself down, energy austerity, thermostat controls. This is a frightening world in which we go. So in conclusion, I'll be happy to take any questions. Keep calm and trust the experts. This is what the message is. The New York Times actually says, and this is in 2021, a year ago, Critical thinking leads to misinformation. Don't go down the rabbit hole of critical thinking. It's not helping in the fight against misinformation. So I want everyone to promise who's watching my speech here tonight, don't go down that rabbit hole. Forget critical thinking. You'll only get yourself in trouble. Forbes magazine, you must not do your own research when it comes to science. If you're a parent and your kids are being forced mass, forced vax, don't look up whether that's a good idea or not. You're not an epidemiologist. These are government bureaucrats who devoted their lives with degrees and decades and expertise. How would you, a rube from the country, uh, a, a hick from Hicksville, possibly stand up to someone with scientific credentials and know what's best for your kids? They studied it. They know. Don't do your research. Trust the experts. Questioning authority has become too much of a good thing, and it's killing people. Do you understand this? This is what the mainstream media is promoting now. Do your own research means following so, a rabbit hole of misinformation. Uh, and you even come from Russia. By the way, it'd be Russian disinformation. If you don't support lockdowns, mask mandates, vax mandates, uh, debanking of people who oppose anyone in power, then you are a Putin apologist. That's the way this works. Slate Magazine, this is one of my favorite. It's time to give up on facts. This is 2017. At least temporarily lay them down in favor of a more useful weapon emotions. And I bring you back to what Greta Thunberg's famous line is. I want you to panic. What does panic instill? Emotion over logic, over reason, over critical thinking. It's all beautiful symbiosis. This is where we are in 2022, sadly. The solution, we could all trip on psychedelics. This is uh, a mainstream publication. If everyone tripped on psychedelics, we do more about climate change. So if you don't care about climate change, I got some pills to make you care. And finally, remember I told you how people thought, oh, a conspiracy theory if you talk this way a couple years ago. Well, this is reality now. Uh, you know, everyone was right. We're all Alex Jones now. 2020 literally meant the world went from uh, climate, from uh, COVID, sorry, conspiracy realities outnumbered conspiracy theories. And that's where we are now. So with that, I'll be happy to take Q&A. This is Committee for a Constructive Tomorrow. CFAC.org is our organization. That's my first book, Politically Incorrect Guide to Climate Change, pre-COVID. Uh, this book is actually coming out by Jerry Corsi, coming out in June of this year. Devastating book about energy. It's going to be a huge book, The Truth About Energy, Global Warming, and Climate Change. And actually, the book is dedicated to me. I wrote the foreword to that, so I'd highly recommend that. Our movie, Climate Hustle 2, uh, which is, uh, was released in the fall of 2020, is having its broadcast premiere on Mother's Day, May 8th, on Newsmax TV. And I believe Newsmax TV is available on the web, and I believe you guys can get it free in Canada. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe you can. 8 o'clock Eastern time, May 8th, is the premiere on Newsmax TV, the whole movie show. And this is a huge deal because we were supposed to be in over almost 800 theaters, but COVID shut the theaters. And then we tried to do the social media, and of course, social media shut us down. Amazon Prime refused to run the movie, even though they had our first movie. When we asked them about running Climate Hustle 2, do you know what they did? They said it violated their content review. And then the same week that they did that, they pulled our first one off of Amazon. It was almost like, oh my gosh, we still allowing your first one? We pulled that. So we lost both movies on Amazon. But that's about to change. We're now going to be on Newsmax TV, and apparently it's going to run regular cycles on Newsmax uh, at different times of the day, weekend. But this is the this is the broadcast network premiere of Climate Hustle 2 coming up just in two weeks on Newsmax TV. My next book is The Great Reset, The Global Elites and the Permanent Lockdown. This will be out in August of this year. And this book includes 
everything. And I had, I had fun time writing this. This is not a dry academic book. The book opens with a quote from Rod Serling, The Twilight Zone, has extensive uh, quotes from Bill Maher, has extensive quotes from comedians, has extensive quotes uh, from uh, uh, pop culture. I go through the book and it is a devastating book in their own words. So with that, that's how you can reach me. And if anyone's asking me how to fight this, I will tell you now, it's time to gouge your eyes out. Give up. It's over. We lost. No more. All right, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Everyone calm down. Just a joke. Be happy to take questions now. Uh, I can't hear anyone, but I'll stop sharing my screen now and come back to the, to the real world. Hi, Mark. Uh, can you hear me, Mark? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, yeah. We put you on after lunch because we thought we could keep us senior citizens awake after lunch, but I think you're going to keep us awake all night now. So uh, I think I'll... I'll give, I'll give everybody your cell number. So if we're still awake at three in the morning, we'll start texting you. Thanks for keeping us up. But uh, uh, I think we well, could. We are tight. We are. We are tight for time. We have Malcolm Roberts on it too. But I think we could take one question. Is anybody? I'm, any, yeah. yeah, we got. We got Norb. You could. It's got to be a thirty-second question, or I'm not taking it. Thirty. It thirty seconds. No. Okay. No, I don't. Has anybody else got a question? I mean, no. No, no I'm not kidding you. Like, okay, I mean, I'm not. Seconds. If you can't ask it in 30 seconds, we don't want it. Come on. He's my buddy, too, and that, that's because I keep the questions to 30 seconds. Hey, Mark, this is your buddy, Norm Kilmanovich. Hey, Norm, um, how's it going? Yeah, the only way to, um, to bust this thing is you have to bust the basics, the basis for the whole climate fraud. And you, you actually did that when you posted my article in 2009 that basically showed that it's physically impossible for carbon dioxide to cause dangerous global warming. So if you go back to that article, yeah. post it again, and throw out the question and attack everybody who's saying that carbon dioxide is causing warming when it's physically impossible, you undermine the whole thing and without climate change, everything falls apart. Thanks. Thank you, thanks. Thank you, yes. That's, that's close enough for me, thanks, Nor. Uh, that, that, that's good. What, one more question, are we good? Yes. Is your book gonna be an audio book as well? Or, or like, a, do, we have, do we actually have to read it or will it be an audio as well? well? Actually, yeah, Green Fraud is an audio book and The Great Reset will be an audio book. Green Fraud also has two chapters on COVID climate connection, but of course it's not as updated as everything I just gave you here today. What about us? What about can we get it? Can we get the book on a CD too? I no? believe that's how the audio book is. I think you can get it a digital audio and also it comes in a CD pack. Yes, both books will have CDs. Yeah. Fair enough. Anybody else? Yes, go ahead, Doug. You, you want me to ask him? <laughs> Doug, we have a we have a senior citizen say, Do you see any bright spots coming <laughs> other than uh, the train at the end of the well, track? I, I, yes, and I'm sorry, I wanted to give you all the bad news because you guys are the activists, but the bright spots are in Virginia just took one school board in one county in Virginia to literally end the mask mandates and vax mandates and lockdowns in all these Northeastern liberal Democrat states. It just takes resistance. The Berlin Wall didn't come down because the East German government said, it's time to give these people freedom in East Germany. It came down because the people no longer gave their consent to tyranny. And I would submit that that's the only way Justin Trudeau will be defeated in Canada. You cannot submit to his tyranny. That's can, can, I don't know. If, can you hear the clapping, uh, Mark? Yes, we act, you, had quite a, you had quite a bit of clapping during your uh, speech as well. But anyway, uh, I, we're, we could take one more question. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, hey, we're just we're looking for a new PM. We were wondering if you'd like to move up here. You could sneak across <laughs> the border. You could run for prime minister. Uh, keep it in mind. Call us back if you'd like to. We'd certainly like to help you. <laughs> sure. Oh, one more question. Go ahead. <laughs> he, he said 269,000 acres. I won't tell you what he said to do with it, but I actually, it doesn't bother me that uh, Bill Gates has 269,000 acres because I think we should have some class action lawsuits against him and some of his buddies, and it'll give us something to take back from him so we don't have to take Microsoft stock. And so, but anyway, may, maybe you're like, who knows? Like, who knows? At least he owns the land. I guess we'll grow something on it, won't we? Yeah, it's going to end up being, uh, you know, who will probably have insect farms and weeds and uh, all the oils for fake meat. I don't know what he's going to grow. 
I, I see Bill Gates in a picture the other day on Twitter, and he looks like he's pregnant, which maybe that's happening too. I don't know. But the, ca the, ca the, ca the caption said, it looks like Bill's been eating a few too many insects. <laughs> so anyway, go we have one more question, Mark, and then we better move. Go ahead, sure. Gord. Good question. Why are the Democrats so opposed to the Keystone XL pipeline? What did we ever do to you other than, uh, like, well, we won't list the things we did to you? Yeah, well, there's one Democrat who isn't in Manchin of West Virginia. The problem is, is that they're all beholden to the climate agenda. So even if there's a reasonable Democrat, he's not going to stand up and, and do anything about that. And Biden did this through executive order anyway. It'd be very hard legislatively to... Uh, to fight this, but there's almost no Democrat other than Joe Manchin of West Virginia who's willing to take a stand against all of this that's happened. Um, and this whole idea of Biden opening up lands now, he's doing it at an 80% fee hike. It's a checkbox. It's not actually opening it up and he's not changing any of the financing structures. He has his treasury department actively involved in literally shutting down the fossil fuel industry by making it as difficult as possible with social credit, ESG type stuff. So it's, if you take away the money, the, the projects aren't going to go forward. That's why it's so disingenuous when they say they have all these leases. I don't know why energy companies aren't drilling. Why would they drill with Biden as president? They'd start a project and it would be a roadblock at every step. Yeah, we have we have pretty much the same kind of uh, we pretty much have the same attitude coming out of Ottawa. Our, you know, our Mr. Fancy Socks goes to Europe and promises to shut down our energy industry. So we have the same problem. Mark, uh, we, we, we have to run. We've got Malcolm Roberts at two. So uh, we're going to get a full uh, full afternoon of uh, climate information. So uh, thank you very much for uh, for joining us. We'll, let's give him a round. Uh, we'll thank give you. you a round of applause. I, I, I like uh, we will uh, we will look forward to, what, to the time when you can come and join us in person and hear the applause in person. So uh, thank you very much. We'll be in touch. OK, thank you, Danny. Thank you. I appreciate it. Take care, Mark. Thank yeah, thank you. Bye. Okay, thank you. OK, so we've got uh, a 15 minute break and then uh, we have Malcolm Roberts from uh, Australia, assuming that I calculated the time difference correctly. So uh, we'll come back at five to two and see if I did. Thank you.